Greetings, 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 greetings. We greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, we are back. It seems like it's been forever, but to God be the glory. We thank the Lord for all that he has done. If you get an opportunity to go and find any posting about this past conference, my God, yes. please do. It was blessed, anointed. Mm -hmm. Um, the favor of God resting and reigning and rule throughout the whole conference. It was glorious from awesome. beginning to the end. And I'm not just saying that because uh, we hosted it or whatever. I'm saying that because there was sacrifice being made. Amen. We consecrated you know, Amen. and we begin to seek the face of God early before we announced this. We knew last year that we were going to do this at this season, this time. And, you know, God just graced us to be able to participate in what he's doing in the kingdom of God. And I'm excited about that because that was just the beginning of where we're going. This year is almost over. We have like four more months left in this year, but I'm still looking for God to do great and mighty explorers in the earth through us Amen. and i'm not just talking about pastor charlene and pastor Val. i'm talking about through us the body of christ and so i'm just excited about that um, personal people excuse me that i know um of of things that has happened transpired in their life we got praise reports of god moving by his power and his glory that right there is enough right there to make you like this stop say lie think on that praise god roll on the floor do a little try and a run and trust me i will do it all but just to see the hand of God, and it wasn't anything that you expected to be any less than, right. but when you experience, and then you get to see testimony after testimony come forth about what God did in people's thinking, what God did in people's mind, what God did in people's spirit, and the fact that he allowed us to come there in one state. But by the time we left their glory to God, I feel God, it was just another state of being, another state of mind, another place that we were in. And I, I so much thank God for that because mm -hmm. truly that was our prayer that mm -hmm. one day we would be in unity and that I was telling one person, I was like, how, how one day I was like, listen, I don't care if they bring their dog. When the dog leaves, he's going to bark different <laughs> because the glory of God mm -hmm. has been in that place. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So it was just that it wasn't anything. Thing that I know that we did right. nothing but position ourselves to receive what God was uh, releasing. And then on top of the women of God preaching and the power of God falling and Pastor Val worshiping, oh my God, it's like, look, the conference was over for me because at one point I was like, don't call my name. Don't look in my direction. I found myself in the corner back then. I was like, oh, it's all gone now. It was just me and God in a place of like, I can let go. I don't have to be responsible. I can do this. My responsibility at that Amen. time was just to bless his name Amen. and to get into line with what was going on. Sometimes when you are busy and you end the things, you have to learn how to, hey, hold up you know, forget everybody else, so to speak. And you got to go for God for yourself. So you can never be in a place that you don't open up and receive what God is releasing for yourself. Amen. It's good to want things for people. It's good to, you know, push them forth and just acknowledge the presence of God. But what good is it if you don't get nothing out of it Amen. yourself? Oh, you had a good time. You had a good experience. But what did God do on the inside of you? Glory to God. I don't even know where we're going today. We're just bragging about the key points that God had released and everything in that place. Um, uh, uh, I seen some some of my pastor friends, you know, we kind of joked after everything was over, but, but how they came to do a job. And, and but the Lord broke them in the process of and they was like, oh, my God, this is a move of God. This is this. This is that. Mm -hmm. And my key point was the panel. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Kudos to Pastor Charlene. To God, be the, to God be the glory. That was one thing that, you know, we hadn't done before, mm -hmm. but it was such a success because not only the topics that we talked about, not only the people that was used, but the people in the congregation had a, 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 a time that they could put their questions across or make a statement of how they viewed or how they sensed or whatever. And it was like, you know, even though, you know, we use key people who sit in high places and positions, but we, the lay people, hallelujah, because sometimes you got to take that role, boss, yes. you know, 
and sit there so you can receive what is released for your life. And then not only that, know how to apply it to your life. Know where you fit in and know this is applicable for me. I could do this. You know, and sometimes you can get into a, a tunnel vision where you don't see outside of anything else. And you kind of, you good over here, but you missing God way over there. And so, Pastor Charlene, you care to talk about that panel thing? I mean, because that was just, that was good in God. Well, to God be the glory of, um, concerning the, the whole conference. I, I just want to say that um, even going back and thinking about how the how everything came together, um, it just was a flow. Everybody was in sync, you know, concerning everything, and it just was a, a awesome flow. And as far as the panel is concerned, it really, um, it brought... Being is that it was a back to the altar conference. It going back to the altar, of being back at the altar. One thing I can say about it, and I'm saying in a literal sense, when you go back to the altar, the Lord can again show you who you are, what your capabilities are, things that you can do. Because to be honest with you, we've talked about the panel. We said we were going to do it. We didn't know we were going to do it, how it was going to flow, whatever. but it flowed so well and to God be all the glory. But it, it put me in a position um, being back at the altar in a sense, um, in a literal sense, but yet in a, another sense to allow me to know that I could do something that I've never done before. Mm. And it was to the glory and the excellency of the father that we were all able to gain something from that. But I just thank God for one, the visionary. Oh. I thank God for her. I thank God for her sacrifice, her vision. I thank God for it just coming all together. Because I don't know anybody that was not blessed. I've talked to a few people who regret that they did not make it. But I've also talked to those who did make it. And they said that it was just phenomenal. And, and when you have gatherings or times of his presence and glory mm -hmm. that can shift your life, that can cause the whole trajectory of your whole life and your being to shift and change makes all the difference in the world. And then a lot of times those times and seasons come when you're at a time and a season where you kind of don't know which way you're going. You, you don't see the Lord in a, in a certain way or you don't feel him in a certain, and then those times are drop in your presence. And you are able to see again because you're back at the altar. You're able to uh, visualize again. You're able to have vision in the sense of knowing the directions and the strategies and the instructions and the plan and the will and the purpose of God. That's what being back at the altar means. And I thank God for the opportunity for one to be a part of it in the different capacities that he afforded me to do it. And just to be, it, it was just a blessing. It was just an all out blessing. And I don't know when Pastor Valerie is going to do another conference. <laughs> <laughs> but I would just admonish those that may, for whatever reasons, were not able to come to this conference, but do come to the next one. Um, I don't know how long it'll be off. It may be eight months, six months, a year. We don't know. I'm putting a demand on her on tonight. <laughs> but nevertheless, I just know that it's just it's these times now that God is what he is saying is come closer. Oh, yeah. Come closer. Come closer. He's telling his people and he's he's summonsing his people. And there is a clarion call that if it's on the individual level, if it's a corporate level, whatever space and place that you find yourself, and you're with your brothers and sisters, or you are by yourself, the Lord is saying. Come close. Come close. Because there's some things that, that, that are about to take place that it's just going to be what it's going to be. And it's not anything that uh, we have a stance and we have a position as believers. But when we take that stance and that position as believers, we've got to know that God got us in every other way. But in, he can't have you if you far off. If you out from the umbrella and the ark of his safety. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of those times, and this was almost like a Kairos moment that he was able to say, I want you to come close. I want you back at the altar. I want you at my feet. I want to, I want to speak to you. I want to sup with you. I want to um, be intimate with you in a way. And if you did not, there was such a corporate blessing 
but there was such an individual blessing at this, at this conference. And if you didn't, either way you went, whether you just joined in corporately or whether just in the quiet times of worship, you were able to get what you needed. So I took to God be the glory for the conference. And we look forward to our, the next gathering, however that is. Um, and whenever the time and season God says it would be, but I tell you what, there was nothing will ever be like the back to the altar conference that My we God. just witnessed this weekend, the weekend past year. Um, and I just thank God for it. So, so you um tapped on a couple of things. I began to look today. Um, I was like, Father, where are you leading me to? And he led me to first Samuel chapter seven. Yeah. And um pretty much surrounded verse 10 and 12, which we may go in a little bit or whatever, but um let's open up with a what a prayer pastor and we're gonna go from here. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for this day, for this time, for this opportunity, God, to give you glory and to praise you on today. We thank you, God, for all that you have already done and that which you're about to reveal and show us. And we ask that you would just touch the minds and the hearts of your people on tonight, God. God, we pray that whatever you would have to say or whatever you would have us to um, do on tonight, that you would definitely get the glory. Thank you, Father. God, let the hearts and the minds of your people be in a place to be open and to receive, God, your word on tonight. God, we thank you for impartation. We thank you that healing is coming and streaming through. Yes, God, we thank Lord. you that somebody, Lord, is going to get an answer that they were waiting for you to answer, but you're going to answer them on tonight. God, thank we you, thank Jesus. you that somebody's going to have a new hope somebody's going to walk in a greater measure of faith on tonight yes lord jesus most of all we ask that your word be glorified and your name be lifted up yes god that you can draw all men and god we just thank you on tonight in your son jesus name we do pray amen amen it's a dangerous thing and i say that in a good kind of way when you see beside a prophet because i'm like she don't touch this she don't touch this she don't touch this lord what we gonna go but one thing you said outside of these 10,000 notes we have over here is that when you begin to talk about presence mm -hmm. and, and everything, I was like, oh, let us stay right there. This is good. Praise the Lord. We may get into it. We may not or whatever. Maybe part two another night, but presence. Mm -hmm. And um, even in the study and everything, it's talking about the Ark of the Covenant mm -hmm. and the names of it and all this other kind of stuff and about having the presence of the Lord. But in relationship, um, I guess we're going to do a little panel thing here, too, mm -hmm. like presence to you. You know, we experience presence um, there, but like on a daily basis or whatever, what 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 do you say presence is and how do you value presence and I mean, how do you entertain God and all? Can you answer some of that? I'll try. Okay. Um, just And I'll say this from a personal place in a space. Um, there are appointed times that one can give to, um, to the Lord. And just you're opening up yourselves in that appointed time that he would come in and he would uh, become intimate with you. And when I say intimate, it means that it will be a heart to heart. It will be a spirit to spirit um, and even mind to mind, because the, that's the place, like I said, again, going back to the altar or back into his presence where he can elevate your thinking, you know, and the thing, you know, because sometimes uh, most times we think too low Ooh. for the God that we serve. And so we can have one level and one thought and he'll take that and he'll say and he'll add to it and before you know it you've got a whole new mindset and you've got a whole new um, standard of thinking from a kingdom perspective. And so um, even though in those appointed times, those are times that um, are very special um, when you talk about presence, but then you have those times where you are just where you are and he'll just come right in. And he'll add to some things that you were thinking and pondering in your heart and questions you might have had. And he'll answer, you know, unbeknown to you at this time because you because because you've placed it on the altar. And he'll come in and he'll have those intimate times with you again. And it's up to the individual when those times come that you avail yourself. Mm. Because sometimes when the Lord comes and his presence is there, you have to give way. 
to the presence of the Lord. You can't be overly occupied to the point that his presence is, you brush it off as nothing. Because it's a it's a very intimate time. It's a very, it's a chosen time. You know, he he will just come in in times when we don't even, we're not there, but he's there at all times. When he says that he'll never leave you or forsake you, he literally means that, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's those times where you are in a place of sometimes a solemn place, or it could just be a peaceful place and he'll just, he'll come right on in and he'll just begin to speak with you. He'll be, and sometimes you can't even respond. <laughs> that, those are the, the best times because a lot of times he'll say things to you that will calm your spirit. It will give you understanding. He'll sometimes just come in and you have to realize, oh God, I've been healed. Mm. You know, there was a time recently that I had gone through some things with, with my feet and it was a day. Just, a, I was like, oh, my feet don't hurt. Don't know when it happened, <laughs> but it did. Ooh, no, that's God. That's intimacy. That's presence. You know, and when you avail yourself to him and you constantly live, and let me go here. And when you live in a manner where you present yourself and you're walking in righteousness and your faith is where it needs to be, when your mind is in alignment, you have already positioned yourself for his presence. Glory. Glory. Amen. Amen. That was good. And so look, like all these little notes that I don't sit down and put down, you kind of hit on a lot of stuff. And um, one was, um, let me just read First Samuel chapter seven. Amen. It says, and the men of um, Kitra Jerem came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sank what's that Saint oh and they sanctified um, Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord and it came to pass while the ark abode in Kare I can't even say it Kirja Jerem uh -huh. mm -hmm. that <laughs> <laughs> the time that, was that long. <laughs> well, it was 20 years. And for all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Samuel spake unto the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, that part, then put away the strange gods and asterisks from among you and prepare your heart unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. Mm -hmm. Then the children of Israel put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Misfit and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together um, to Misfit and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Misfit. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Misfit, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Um, I don't know why I stopped that. Them glasses is very important. I need some new ones. Okay. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, cease not to cry unto the, cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and sacked and, and offered it for a burnt offering, holding unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. The Lord heard him and Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel, but the Lord thundered mm. with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomforted them, and they were spitting, smitting before Israel. Jesus, my Lord. Mm. So in that, was talking about the art and the presence mm. and it being misplaced, and it said talking about it being in a, a hill place or how I get that through study. And after mm. that, it was talking about how. Pretty much they came back into this place that God, that Samuel had called them to. And it said that they began to basically cry out 
to the Lord. Amen. And so we talk about presence, right? Right. So there was a place that they had to get positioned mm -hmm. right Amen. to receive the presence Amen. and come on one accord. And they began to cry out before the Lord. This cry was not just tears coming down their face, but this cry was a prayer Amen. and a heartfelt thing that they knew that they had gotten themselves into trouble because of the things that they had set up before God. And so it's good to come back to the altar. But when you come back to the altar, you got to understand that there is a releasing of things that you got to give up Amen. because he's calling you back to a place of security. He's calling you back to a place of familiarity, mm -hmm. not to the things that you have attached yourself to, but the things that he has placed that you should go after. See, one thing about the Lord is that he he interested in who is going to pursue after me. You get presence because of your pursuit. No pursuit, no presence. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference in uh, uh, this altar or the altering or that we, that's happening here. They had to be altered in their thinking so that Jesus. they could position themselves to receive. See, what we do, we think that we can position ourselves to receive from God, but we don't want to put nothing in place of the thing that we should remove. And mm -hmm. so in, when you come to the altar, there is a place of what you're receiving, but there's also a place of what you're going to give up. Hallelujah. And you got to know in his presence that he's saying, listen, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to cut this. And a lot of times it's things that the Lord has already prompted us in our spirit. You need to get rid of that. And you know, attitude, you need to get rid of that. You know, you know how some things it says that some things shouldn't be labeled or mentioned amongst the people of God. And when you have these big idols, like they was talking about Baal and Astra and things like that, was talking about the fertility God, the sun God. They was doing all type of sexual things and orgies and this in the name of God and, and the name of these deity gods. And they thought they was going to intertwine a holy God with an unholy thing and make it to be one God said no in this place of altering he's coming us to come forth and we're going to have to deal with our hidden things and our hidden secrets so that when this time comes again there will be nothing that will be in a place that will cut you from his presence Amen. sin removes the presence of the Lord so we will say that it took us a gathering to get there no but we have an understanding that appropriately as you said that when we come into the presence together well, one heart, one accord, one mind, then we asking him to come. A sacrifice had already been made. Mm -hmm. But in this Old Testament, it talked about Samuel, who was always there amongst them. But it talked about him making a sacrifice uh, by taking a suckling lamb. And not only did he cut its throat, but he gutted it. And this is how the enemy think that he want to keep us. He want to cut your throat and to gut you. But the Bible and the Lord said not so. That's why he always give us a way of escape. And our way of escaping this season is through repentance. Amen. And faith. That's why, like a while ago, when you were talking about, like, oh Lord, she getting up in that thing. <laughs> like, you have to have faith. And faith sometimes, um, a bit where you be in a place, glory to God, where you don't know the ends, the outs, the beginnings, or whatever, but you believe against what the enemy is trying to pursue or paint a picture before you, because that's all it is. It's just like an image that the enemy is trying to pro. Uh, portray before you so if you can bite the apple or believe the lie not that you're going to be but the fact that you already are you already are a part of the body of Christ you already are are a part of the kingdom. You already are God's chosen. But if you listen to the lie of the enemy, he'll cause you to walk into things that will cause you to be extract from the things of God. So in this season, you have to tell the devil, not so. Not so. Samuel, glory to God, had a vision. And you know, for a long time, if you begin to read and study, it was like he was missing from the scene. He was missing from the scene because they had intertwined themselves with all this other stuff. And so when he, when he was like, look, you either going to choose God way or the highway well since you did not choose God way in the highway not only are you not going to be in God's presence but I'm not going to have no affiliation with that thing either so sometimes you got to be in a place where you make a lot of demarcation you can go over there act like a fool do all you want to do but guess what I, I'm going to love you from afar over here but guess what 
He did. He stayed in constant relationship with the Father, regardless of what the people did. Amen. He stayed in constant relationship. Hallelujah. So when they when when they begin to cry out before God, guess what? His spiritual ears, his spiritual sense, and his spiritual discernment was united or caught a fire. And he was like, now he knew from the chambers of heaven that there was a time for him to be released. And now he can go and see about the people. And so when he began to um, pray and say and do and perform they got into a place of fear because they thought that the enemy was about to overtake them why because of unbelief unbelief come in when you allow mm -hmm. sin to come in the door glory to God and you don't allow the presence of God to lead you I keep on telling people the enemy will drive you into something but the Holy Spirit will lead you into it like a good old gentleman that he is hallelujah how can we come together one mind one accord and one because we we in pursuit of something greater Amen. Mm. and then glory to god we talked about the plot of the enemy i'm gonna go right here and pastor stop me nudge me whatever but i'm on i'm like this now but um the plot of the enemy the enemy was looking from afar and when they began to gather together they was like uh-huh they over there crying Ooh. and they over there pleading to a guy that they could not see hallelujah that's why you got to know about a spiritual thing versus a physical thing yeah. some people just looking in the natural thinking that things gonna pop out it's gonna happen but you got to have a spiritual eye mm -hmm. to see you got to have spiritual senses to know how this holy spirit this holy ghost this god this jesus thing operate and flow that's yeah. through relationship. relationship but i can assume that you uh, don't like this uh, but if i don't have a relationship with you i don't know if you like it or not mm -hmm. but because of relationship not only relationship but right relationship gives me an insight of what you approve mm -hmm. of and your disapproval same thing in the natural same thing in the spiritual mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna jump off of that now here they go gathered together and they pleading and crying out and then a sacrifice has been made up for the lord to show forth himself presence is already there glory is already there anointing is already there shifting is already there change is already there but if you in a place and you you know a little shaky mm -hmm. you don't know glory to god the head from the tail then you don't know if god really gonna do this thing for you mm -hmm. hallelujah and you start looking in your natural when god saying i need you to look with your spiritual eye and see what i'm about to deliver we always talking about an upload and a download god download I got upload. Hallelujah. But you got to know by the spirit of the Lord that he's going to do those things that he Jesus. said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And man time and man season is not the same program mm -hmm. of God. You got to get out of your flesh so you can walk in the realm of the spirit and know that he's still moving behind the scenes. It might take him a little longer than what you suppose. Amen. But what is the day with the Lord? Hallelujah. A thousand years will pass away. But mm -hmm. the word of God and the command of God, the change of God, the ordinance of God, it's not going to change. But that's when you know your faith is being built up. Because if God done it before, he's got enough to do it again. He's a redo God. And you know, we always say like God, the God of a second chance. Mm -hmm. No, he's a God of many chances. Many chances. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there. You got something to say, Pastor? No, okay. it, just, it just goes along with what the Lord has been saying um, to me in my personal time. He says, I, he said, we are in a do it again dispensation. Mm. He said, I am getting ready to do it again for the people of God. In other words, the things that we have read about and that we read about in the Bible, the signs, the miracles of wonders, the testimonies that we read about, he is the same God that is getting ready to do it again. So if you can believe, if you would stay in that right place of relationship with God, you are about to see God do it again. Do it again, God. Woo. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to deliver again come on here he's about to say because he said he was married to the backslide yes, again he's about to do it again you've been having problems in your body he's about to heal again can you believe again because sometimes in you waiting on god sometimes your faith will waver but can you stand in a place of belief stand in a place of faith stand in a place of hope for him to heal your body because he's getting ready to do it again again if he did it one time He's got enough to do it again. Rula. If he saved them one time, all he's gonna do is bring them back into the uh, back into the fold, back into the back into the kingdom. He's gonna do it again. 
He is going to do it again. He's a God of restoration. He's a God of redemption. He's a God of healing. He's a God of deliverance. If he's protected one time, he's going to protect them again. Mm. That's the God that we serve. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Amen. If he brought you from one level, don't think that you on the level where God is. You're going to stay in one place. God is will promote you again. If you can only believe. I didn't mean to get off. Uh -uh, that, that was good. Go ahead. But we just in a do it again dispensation. And you better know that he's the God that can do it again. And like Pastor Valerie said, he's not a God that's just gonna, that has done it one time. He's going to do it again. Can you believe again? Can you hope again? Can you stay in faith again to believe him? Sometimes when we don't see the manifestation and when it don't come in our time frame, but Pastor Valerie already told us it's not in our time and it's in his time. It's in his time. And he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Amen. When you said that, that brought my mind back to there is an infilling. Yes, sir. Mm. A reef. That's right. But that when feeling, glory to God, this is like your gas tank, baby. Your gas tank going to run to that red light if you let it. If you don't put no more gas Amen. in there. And guess what you got to do? Do it again. You better, go, you better go back over there to that gas <laughs> station again. and get another fill up. Get another Because my fill up is gone. Amen. And you know what? It's a sad thing that you running on empty fumes. And you just need to come back into a place of asking Amen. God, Lord, Amen. fill me again. Glory to God. Amen. I was saying that the greatest prayer that they could have prayed or asked um Samuel to pray was they asked Samuel to continue to pray. In other words, he don't sacrifice, he don't did this, but it was like, look, don't let up off that prayer. Amen. Prayer is the tool that birthed us into mm -hmm. the place that we need to be. Mm -hmm. And so not only have you have you got to put away those idols, Amen. hallelujah, be it house, be it car, be it new job, be it finances, be it kids, be it whatever Amen. yo, you know is your shrines your your whatever that you've been praying to hallelujah you gotta pull those things mm -hmm. down in the natural hallelujah and in the spiritual and let them know that they don't supersede god the god of the universe the creator mm -hmm. and when you put proper things and proper places and put him back into being number one Amen. that you seek first the kingdom of god and all these things are added unto you you've been seeking all this other stuff and wondering mm -hmm. when god was going to move he said when you put me back on top yeah. when you give me number one space in your life and sometimes we think that we're giving God number one space but we fill our life with being busy. Um, one of my business partner in another juncture that I really yeah. don't, you know, do the business or whatever, like I need to. Yeah. Mm, he um said, Well, how can I pray? I'm praying today, and how can I pray for you? I said, Pray for focus. Amen. We pray for that. focus on the things that. You know, I'm focused over here because I'm committed. Yeah. But then I have let so much other stuff go that my focus is off. Pray for realignment. Amen. <laughs> that God will realign my thoughts, my actions, my heart, my ways. Pray glory to God that I walk into a way that God has called me to, but I can't see because the scales are on my eyes or because I have picked up other things that mm. God never required me to pick up. Jesus. That's how they were. They don't got mixed up in with a mixed up group of people and they start doing the things that they seen other people do and not the things God had called them to do. That's why, look, I be telling her or she tells me sometimes, I can't do what you do. Amen. And, and vice versa. But the thing about it is, we honor the God that's in each other. Amen. We respect the God that's in each other. Amen. And sometimes she step on my toes, ouch and amen. And sometimes I crush hers too, amen. ouch and amen. But amen. guess what? We don't fall out of fellowship. And amen. then look, and when we do in our emotions, our feelings, we have to take apart, get take ourselves together yeah. and then come back and, you know, and move on forward. So we've been talking even about right relationship. Mm -hmm. And there's no way you can have a right relationship with God and you ain't got no right relationship right, this yeah. way. Well, that Why? makes the cross. Okay. A Go right ahead. relationship with him, up and down, and then a right relationship with your, your brothers and your sisters. That is the cross. But you know what most people want to do? They want to have it right here. And they think it's not going to affect they, this. Uh -uh. But if you don't get this right, right mm -mm. your prayers ain't doing nothing, baby, but bouncing mm -hmm. right off that wall or right off that ceiling and straight down to the ground. Right. Because if you, God honors how we respect and honor e each other mm -hmm. that Absolutely. comes back to the love one for another Amen. and there's no way that you can love a guy whom you have not 
physically seen. Because we talk about spirit and in truth, mm -hmm. right? Of worship, but even spirit and in truth. Spiritually, do you see him? Now, spiritually, you may feel him or sense him, Amen. but do you see him like this flesh and blood? No. Mm -hmm. What you going to do with that? The guy that you cannot see, but I can see you. Then I'm going to dishonor you. Where's the God in that? So when God begin to pull back on back to the altar, he's still dealing with our idiot secrets, yes. our uh, biases, our prejudices, and all this other kind of stuff. He's still dealing with all of that. Because if you don't come clean all the way, ain't no sense of you crying out to God, because guess what? It's just like praying to that statue. He don't hear you. <laughs> it's not going to move for you. Amen. So even in that, they was like continuing to pray. Why? Because they feared what was coming mm -hmm. because of what they heard. Mm -hmm. The Philistine, Philistine, excuse me, heard them praying, knew that they was in a place, but they went to a place, glory to God, of where repentance was set prior to, and they went to a place of separation. Mm -hmm. So let's go back here. So it was Jacob at that same place. Mm -hmm when he was leaving Laban and he was going to the place that God had called him to go to for his future mm -hmm. at that place. He said, may the Lord watch between who me and you mm -hmm. Amen. Lord to God. And so at that same place of repentance, that same place of change, that same crossroads that you gotta go through, mm -hmm. that's where they found themselves at. But guess what? Different. The difference is they had a cry Mm. They had a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about sacrifice, Old Testament, good stuff, and how the aroma of the burnt sacrifice was coming up to the Lord. And he don't got that smell, that sweet aroma up in his nose print. Hallelujah. Guess what happened? He turned towards them. That's right. You want God to turn towards your situation and deliver and heal you. He's saying, repent, get your heart right, remove all this stuff out of your life. And then well, we're talking about the altar, right? Amen. Being at the altar, being an alter, uh, alteration of change. And then at that Ooh. part, glory to God, <laughs> glory to God. At that point, glory to God, where this, all this is taking place. God is turning his head towards them. And the Bible said that he thundered. Jesus, mm. Jesus, Jesus. He sent them in a, to a rate of confusion against they say, oh, That's why you need not have to worry about no devil, about no demon, about no imps, nor his cohorts. Look it up. You can research that. You don't have to worry about that. When you have positioned yourself in the presence of God, Amen. presence, presence, to receive. And your heart is right. And you have removed everything that will cause sin. You move all the sin out your life that will cause you to be separate from God. Jesus. You remove all of that out of the way. Now, only thing you can do is expect the miracle. Amen. Amen. Expect the increase. Expect for God to move. And see, this is what we do. We try to fleece God. If you don't do it this, that, today, mm. if you don't do it when I require it, then this thing is not going to work. No, nah, he's trying to see if you in this for the long haul. Mm. Sometimes we just doing things so we can get what we want because we manipulate. We manipulate. And you think you get ready to manipulate God. Not, no, no. ma'am. No, sir. And not so. It's not going to happen. So what he doing? I was talking to this young lady today. She had a bad report and everything. And I said, mm -mm, don't go there. The reason why the enemy wants to see if you going to break. Mm -hmm. I said, but anything that's dead is not going to move in this season. And so this situation right here, let me know that your flesh is still alive. And when your flesh is still alive, you will respond. You will bark back. You will mm -hmm. say stuff. But when you get to a place of cutting, when you get to a place of deliverance and when you get to a place of change mm -hmm. some things you won't even utter out your mouth now a thought may come but you'll know how to pull that thought down Amen. wrestle it down and say oh no you're not gonna have rain in my life and in my over me and you're not gonna cause me to speak nothing out my mouth see they had to get a position that they were speaking the right language because you can get a position and begin to cry and be like woe is me ain't nothing good ever come to my life and this and you can start saying all these negative things and guess what's gonna happen it's exactly what you say is because there's no faith in the God that you serve that God is going to move the obstacles out the way mm -hmm. but if you get in a rhythm and a line of faith mm -hmm. and begin to confess 
profess, walk in, believe, and expect a miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not no one-time thing. You have to have a lifestyle. I'm going to stop right there. Amen. Go ahead, lifestyle. Amen. So I'm going back a little bit. Okay. So when that, that little quickening of whatever, the Lord said, he asked me a question. He said, do my people want pride or presence? Mm. One can go to the altar and the other one can you got presence and you want him, his presence, you can come to the altar. But if you got pride, you can't go to the altar with that. You got to let some things go. Do you want your pride or do you want his presence? You got to ask yourself that. Do you want to get it right and be stay, stay in righteousness? Or you want to be out of the fellowship? of your brother and him, all of that, that because that's really all inclusive because you can't go to him and be off with your brother or your sister. Can't be off with your brother and your sister and go to him. So do you want pride or presence? And that causes you to come into alignment right to what God is saying and doing. Amen. That is a part of the pursuit mm -hmm. of his presence. Mm -hmm. Some people just want to be right and they're not going to bend because my way or no way, but it cannot be your way. It got to be the way that the Lord wants you to go. And if you can, if you can bend up under the presence of Lord, of the Lord, of God, I be God, the God, the Lord, because yeah. he's just like so holy and so awesome that, you know, nothing can compare nothing. to presence, to knowing that. Not like I think I know, I, I want to know, but knowing that no matter where you are, he is there with you. He's there to direct and guide you. Now they understood this. If they didn't understand anything, they understood that Samuel had a relationship. That's right. They understood that Samuel was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He wasn't that, that, that priest. Hallelujah. He didn't come up the Le Leviticus uh, uh, line. Hallelujah. But he did priestly acts. Why? Because of relationship. Because relationship will open up a door that calls you to operate and flow in a, mm -hmm. in a place and a level that you didn't even qualify for. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Presence. Mm -hmm. relationship. relationship. Woo! I don't even know. <laughs> he began to pray for these. He prayed for grace. Mm -hmm. He prayed for mercy. Mercy, glory to God, covered. Grace, mm -hmm. covered. And in that, in that intimate time of him asking God to move, the Bible said, that got to be a powerful prayer. You think about that. Mm -hmm. the, the, he prayed. He sacrificed. He prayed. They asked him to continue to pray. And then it thundered. His prayer was so powerful Should that it happen. caused the elements mm. to shift. Jesus. That's the kind of relation. And look, that was like, you know, like I say, pray, pray always, continue to pray, mm -hmm. pray without mm -hmm. ceasing. That's all in there. There's not no one and done. Mm. You got to continue to do this. I don't know. I remember that um, it was years ago was at Pastor Harold Church and um, Pastor Kathy was ministering right. and this lady had came up and um. She was saying that, you know, the Lord, you know, is telling me to tell you to pray self-righteous. Well, I do pray. I was like, oh, Lord, ain't nobody saying you're not praying. But God is saying there's more than I'm requiring of you in this season. <laughs> ain't nobody saying that you're not doing certain things. But then there's a place where the deep calls for, for the deep. Amen. And God knows exactly how far he wants you to dig a little bit deeper. We were talking about being in situations, the marriage and relationships at some time that we were like, Lord, I'm done. I'm not going to do no more. This is it, whatever. But at the end of the day, because of love, because of presence, because of relationship, you find yourself buckling under, undergirded and pulling them up. Glory to God, when you didn't think you had any more left in you to do. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal example, mm -hmm. okay? I know many can relate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and this has come from an old, old, old place. And I was like, God, I'm already licking dirt. I can't go no farther. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I was able to go farther. Amen. And sometimes God will allow things to come in your life to stretch you. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because if there's no stretching or there's no pulling or there's no trial or there's no adversity, your hind parts will stay right where you are. But the Lord was like, I'm calling you to a higher place. I'm calling you to a place of intimacy. I'm calling, he said, I'm going to allow this thing to happen so that you will turn your way unto me. Amen. Not only did they do that, but they consecrated. And the Bible talked about them pouring out water. Glory to God, which is talking about the spirit. Hallelujah. It's talking about living water. It's talking about the sacrifice that they gave. That's a lot. And we can't even go there. It'll take us another hour to go all through that tonight. But anyway. They poured it out as an offering unto the Lord, saying, Lord, look, we already don't good at this thing. We already don't sacrifice this thing. It's already don't bled out. But God, I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to make another sacrifice. What? They wanted God to know that I'm serious this time and I'm not going to be back and forth pity patting and playing games with you in your presence mm -hmm. but I'm going to go out for the things of the deep uh, the Bible talking about the deep things color for the, for the deep things uh, but really we still on the shoreline and we haven't even gone and plunged in the there yet uh, and God is searching for people and seeking for people that will deny your flesh deny your ways mm -hmm. deny your mindset and say Father my prayer is like Father give me the mind of Christ glory to God that when I look in a situation, even though it looks bleak to me, that I can see, God, how are you going to move in this thing in the future? God, how you want me to handle this thing? Because if I vow operate in the spirit of flesh and vow, I'm going to mess that thing up. But Amen. when I deny myself and begin to ask in prayer, which way you want me to go, Father? He'll give me a direction, mm -hmm. glory to God, that I didn't even know that was available for me. And I have to testify to this. When the Lord begin to nudge you in his prayer, presence and you thinking don't try to rationalize because I got a confession I don't rationalize some things and glory to God God was like no they want them baby I told you this this and this I forewarned you but you stepped over in there anyway and because you deny what I what I said and you sense that was your flesh talking and not realizing that I have relationship with you and I'm speaking to you and I'm telling you the direction you go okay you're gonna pay the price of that but I'm gonna show you in that thing Jesus. in other words you're gonna get a lesson out of the things, Lord, to God, that you forfeit that God has told you to do. Well, I don't know. I have a strong sense and that this is supposed to be something different. And then you go against the strong sense and that's the Holy Spirit telling you to move and operate and flow mm -hmm. in the way, Lord, to God. But when you analyze guilty, rationalize guilty, and you're going to do things your own way, right. guess what? It's a price that you're going to help pay. And you can't look for nobody to get you out of that price because you're going to pay that. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So there is repercussions into things that you're supposed to do. You know you feel something off. You know this, but you're going to override it and do it anyway. Okay, pay the reper repercussions. And after you pay that repercussions, then maybe your light, click, your light yeah. bulb will click on the next time. Yeah. Be like, ooh, I remember mm -hmm. that the Lord told me the last time when I had that feeling in the inside that this is not the way I'm supposed to go. So now I know. Don't do that no more. Mm. God is continuous to teach us if we'll let him teach us. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about obeying what you hear the spirit tell you to do. I missed the boat. No problem. I repented. Lord, you sure told me. Lord, you sure showed me. But I overrode rationalized mm -hmm. what I know he had spoke. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how it was going to fall out in the end but I do know I felt a little uneasiness and I wasn't at peace with some things and I'm like Lord whatever whatever God how you gonna and then the whole while it was the Lord it was the Lord it was the Lord's doing it was the Lord speaking Amen. and now I'm asking him even the more thank God for the experience Amen. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world Amen. they let me know baby get off the shoreline you need to go deeper Amen. there's a thing called deep sea fishing Hey, well, these kind of fish you cannot catch on a I'm surface sure. level. Mm -hmm. You got to go way, way, way out in the ocean to get that red snapper, baby. Yeah. And you better have some different equipment. What? You can't that take look, the equipment that you, you can't take that look. You can't take that and go out there and think you're going to get a red snapper. Because you, you ain't going to catch it. You're going to break your, gonna break your line and keep <laughs> on going. Glory to God. Amen. So it is in the natural, mm. so it is in the spiritual. That let you know you think you don't arrive yet because your name is Sister Cooker Much. I don't know. Whatever. 
No, baby. He's like, no, I'm going to bring you down to where you really live in there. You ain't over there where you think you was. Come over here and let's work on this right here. Work on listening. Work on obeying. Work on sensing. Amen. How you going to know the discernment of the Lord is because of things that you are tried by. Glory to God. If you never are tried by that, you will never know that you're able to overcome or accomplish it in presence. Presence will teach you that. Amen. I don't have nothing else, Pastor. And so uh, one of the things I want to elaborate that you said is that, and, and, we've, and we've been guilty, I've been guilty, and it, and it just brought it right back up for me. A lot of times when we get instructions and we get um, strategies from the Lord, we will get one word and we done, we done jumped off the building. Well, he wants us to you you have to you have to go to him step by step by step. In other words, he give you this if he give you this instruction and you feel in an un, uh, uneasiness or something shifts in the middle of the process, you gotta go back to him. And sometimes that may seem like because we 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 judge time by his time and it, and, and that's not the, that's not the case. So if we down to the last few minutes 1159 1159 and things come up in the in the same 1159 you got to go back to him and say okay god what are you saying this is what i'm sensing this is what i'm seeing what are you saying vital part you know and, and and so so many times guilty we will run on with what the last word that he gave us but you know just like he did Abra abraham abraham he had to call his name twice to keep him from sacrificing his son because he had a word from the Lord and he trusted in the Lord. And not that the Lord um, changed his mind, he changed his method. <laughs> the sacrifice still went down in the same place. But he just didn't use, he just didn't let, allow him to sacrifice his son. So we got to be just that uh, Keen in the spirit. Keen in the spirit and sensitive in this season. That just because he gets, he, he, it, 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 sometimes it's a directional thing. I need to tell you this or say this to get you going in this direction. Because in other words, you may have gone in that direction. But because I'm telling you to go in this direction or you got in this word, but when you're going along in that direction and something shifts, you got to be able to be able to be sensitive to hear what he's saying. Be flexible. Be flexible. Because if you're not flexible, you you're gonna, 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 you Help us, God. Help us. Mm -hmm. Help us. And so, you know, um, sometimes, you know, back in the day, especially when we 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 super spiritual weird sometimes, mm -hmm. and we we picking out a word, and this this person right here didn't be here, but this word right here is for them. Mm -mm, for you. Lord, help us. For me. Kiki Shepherd, right Lord, here. Lord, help us. For me. Help us, God. Mm -hmm. That's my prayer. Mm -hmm. In this altering in this back to the altar, I gotta lay down some things. <laughs> I gotta come back to the drawing table. Mm -hmm. I gotta come back and re-ask mm -hmm. what I already asked before. Mm -hmm. Cause I only got part of the direction. Mm -hmm. And after I fulfill the last part of the direction, now it's come back, it's come back time mm -hmm. for me to come back to the altar mm -hmm. to ask again. Amen. And something that recently me and you um we learned together. As we come back to the altar, the main point is that before you bring all the things, carry yourself. Because in the process of life and going back and forth and in and out of his presence. And when I say in and out of his presence, I mean his manifested glory. But I'm saying we're always in his presence as his children. Some there are a lot of times when things will happen where you when you bring yourself to the altar, he's trying to do something within you. He's trying to change this right here. Because if eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, he's got to change this. He said, neither had it any into your it ain't heart. Even, it, it ain't even into your heart. You don't even know yet. So you he gotta change your mind. 
Because you'll feel mine ain't right. You ain't going to hear right. He'll tell you one thing and you'll hear something totally different. If your mind ain't right, he'll show you something and you won't even be able to recognize or see it or be, re or it'd be something, it'd be revelation. But because you got your eyes, because your mind, your perception, your perception, oh. heart, if this ain't right, this right here is going to be a wicked. And who can know that but him? He says deceiving. And then if this ain't right, guess what? This ain't going to be right. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That mouth. That mouth. Woo. You want to touch it? Yeah, I think we should. Go ahead. We don't jump in. <laughs> in this season, being in the kingdom, being God's children, being in his presence, our language has to change. It has to change. Not what we say, how we say it. Well, I didn't mean it that way. Okay. Well, how did you mean it? I, I heard what you said. I heard the tone in which you said it. In the body language. In the body language. Because see, when you come into his presence, when you back at that altar, everything that's high, it's going to be brought low. In the presence. So you can't talk ugly. You can't talk negative. You got to be positive. You got to speak those things that be not as though they were. Now, truth and facts, we, we know that. We've, we've heard that. We get that. But stick with the truth. The facts are going to be what they are. And the facts sometimes can change. Anybody can tell you facts can change. A different situation can change the facts. But the truth will always be the truth. Oh, man. But in this season, we got to be careful with what we say. Because what we say is manifesting like that. And when the Bible tells you, you will eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat it. Like, so, that's enough right there to make you repent of just oh, saying different little things. Yes. Because every... Um, Vain word, mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just you throwing words out there, just a throwing mm -hmm. out there. We still gonna be judged by those, and sometimes we Amen. run up at the mouth, sometimes, and we forget mm -hmm. that. Yeah, That's man. what he gonna judge. Yeah. Yeah. Your actions mm -hmm. and your words. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, yeah. Yeah, that's a biggie fry. Maybe that's what we need to concentrate on this week. Lord, let me be mindful of the words that mm -hmm. I speak mm -hmm. and make sure we say positive things into mm -hmm. his presence mm -hmm. and the atmosphere. And the thing about that is when you're called and chosen and purposed and all that good stuff and have relationship with the father, he honors some of the words that we speak. Mm -hmm. And when we speak those things into the atmosphere, you better be looking for those words to cause a uh, domino effect mm -hmm. of change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you have to be mindful of the things that you release in the air um i don't care if they smoke and crack don't you call them no crack here you better call them women or men of god mm -hmm. until you see the manifestation of god's glory mm -hmm. because it's what you believe your mm -hmm. faith mm -hmm. and what you speak and what you have actually done i don't care what situation it is you have formed a an agreement People of God do not realize how powerful agreement. Now, the reason we were able to witness the testimony that we had about the healing, about the healing mm -hmm. and the miraculous mm -hmm. is because why we came into agreement. We came into agreement and we prayed and we prayed. And so there were principles that were there that the spirit of darkness could not penetrate. It had to prevail. <laughs> God honored it. And so agreement is powerful. What are you coming into? A, I, we done switched. What are you coming into agreement with in this season? It's all about the altar. It's all about the altar. The altar is, is it presenting you, telling you one thing. And then when you get up and you stand back up in, in this life that we have to live in, what, what, what are you going to agree with? What he told you in his presence or what you presently looking at? got to ask ourselves that. 
I come in agreement with the word of God. Amen. Amen. That by his stripes I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. I come in agreement with the word of God that I'm above only and not, not beneath. beneath. Amen. I come in agreement with the word of God that I am the head and not the tail. Amen. I come in agreement with the word of God that whatever his principles and his standards say, that's what I believe Amen. and I stand on. Agreement. 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 Let me tell you the one, one of the powerful principles of agreement. Agreement will produce for you what you don't even have the ability or you think you can produce from within yourself by yourself. That's what agreement will do. God will honor agreement. You let you and somebody else come together and agree on anything. Not only he going to be in the midst, but he's going to do what you asked because of that agreement. That's what the covenant is. Covenant is the epitome of agreement. When you said that, it brought my mind back to something that we recently experienced. <laughs> we shifted a whole movement mm -hmm. on the power of, of agreement. agreement. Think I'm playing. What had been founded for years, what, 28? 28 years in the making. 20 plus. We all know that for sure. Yeah. But the power of agreement shifted mm -hmm. everything. Amen. And they will never forget mm -hmm. that shield, mm -hmm. the power of agreement. Amen. You better know who you are, mm -hmm. who you belong to, who you serve, mm -hmm. and the things that he have invested in you. We're not talking about your cousin, the preacher down the street. We're talking about what he has deposited in you. Amen. There's good in you, but you got to realize that there's something in me that I got to go after. And the only way you're going to get there is in presence. In the altar, at the altar. Right relationship. Right relationship. With God. With God. Mm. We're going to let y'all go. Amen. And that alone will teach you how to agree. What to come in agreement. Because you don't want to come in agreement again in this season with everything. But when you're in the right relationship or when you're in the presence of the Lord and when you've been faithful to the altar, it will teach you what to be in agreement with, what not to be in agreement with. No, because you know what? That, won't, that right there, but it won't, it won't bear witness in this hour, in this season. Amen. Amen. Um, I think we're going on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes, a lot of times, most times, you just got to sit and think all that he has done and yet what he promised you that he's about to do. And you just have to count the whole cost be sensitive, mm. ask the right things, seek his face first, and every 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 other thing gonna mm. come in alignment to mm. what he has already released for your life. You don't have to go to no prophet. Mm -mm. You don't have to cross over and go into another realm and open up another door of your life asking somebody that's not of God mm. to read your poem or foretell your future. All you got to do is set your heart, Amen. your mind, and your spirit on God and things above. Trust and believe that he's going to do it for you. He'll begin to speak to you through his word, mm -hmm. through the elements, two places you go. He'll bring people you never even seen before. Mm -hmm. He'll use somebody that you know. He'll use somebody that you, I'm trying to tell you, he'll use whoever he want to use when he get ready. And don't be looking at the stature of where you think they are. It has nothing to do with who he decides to use. Mm -hmm. He'll use a baby. Mm -hmm. He'll use a drunk. Yes, he will. He'll use what you call a homeless person mm -hmm. because they don't meet your standards. Mm -hmm. Don't limit God. That's one thing he told me a while ago. You were saying something and I was like, yes, Lord, this is. And then that thought escaped me. He was like, take the limits off. Take the limits off. Amen. Amen. Tonight, 
I put this as a title. I don't even know how that came in, but it was God confidence. It's not the confidence I have in myself. Mm -hmm. It's the confidence I have in my God. That as I set myself and I cry out towards him and I take all that foolish mm -hmm. things out of my life, my God confidence kicks up and I know that God is going to work that thing out for my good that he may get the glory Amen. out of my life. Amen. Ooh, you want to close us out in prayer? Because if we don't, if we, if this thing is hot and if we don't stop, we'll be on walked into something else. So maybe part two or 10 or 12. I don't know. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God, we thank you again on tonight. Thank Lord, you for you getting the glory and for your word. We thank you, God, for your people. Father, I'm asking in this time of prayer that you would give your people, God, confidence. Yes, God. Let their confidence be in you. And God, I thank you, God, that when their confidence is in you, that God, you will do great and mighty things. God, that you will do it again. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you, God, on tonight that you are causing your people to come back to the altar. You, They're coming, God, and back to the altar, God, because you're there. God, we thank you because that's where your com their confidence will come. And they're back going back to the altar. They will have an identity. God, they will meet themselves and know who they really oh, are. Nice God, man. we thank you in this hour and this season that you're raising the standard. God, we thank you, God, that we're, we're able to come to that place that you're calling us to, which is closer to you. Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus that your people be blessed. God, and we thank you that we can are able to give you the glory in all things. And Father, we ask that you would cause this word to rest in the hearts, yes, Lord. rest in the minds of your people. And God, that you be glorified in your people. God will have the means, God, to do that which you purpose for them to do in these last days. Father, we thank you for having the confidence in you. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Glory to God. And good night, my thank you, Father.